Hello, fellow YouTubers. Thanks for joining. Appreciate your time. Let's go ahead and get you ramped up to take the Google Cloud Platform Cloud Architect exam. Just a quick notice uh, in the uh, the video description area, I just posted a link for my new Google Cloud Platform Cloud Architect Bootcamp on Udemy.com. Uh, it's uh, about seven hours of nonstop testing preparation uh, as well as test questions and quizzes to get you ready. There's also another uh, 120 questions I'm going to be releasing for the practice tests to help you succeed in passing this interestingly designed and thought not so well thought out exam. So let's go ahead and talk about why we want you to get Google certified. Okay, so the first reason is is that Google is spending a crap load of money here. And so they're doing what they can to market uh, and get people on board. Uh, they're definitely targeting the small and mid-sized businesses. And they're definitely going after enterprise as well. I just, again, they need a little bit more work before they're there. But they did pick up some good market share and I do have faith that they are going to take another probably five or six, seven percent maybe of market share this coming uh, next year or so. So I think, uh, you know, if you just look on LinkedIn, you'll see that the number of Google Cloud Platform positions and architect roles, etc., have just skyrocketed. There is over 2,100 roles available just in the U.S. So, with that said, let's talk about an area that was tested um, on this exam. Okay, so this will be about resource manager and organizational nodes. So, we have a basically a Google solution called Cloud Resource Manager. And Cloud Resource Manager is essentially a way that you can manage your total cloud resources, basically all your Google resources. And you want to do that with what is called an organization and we'll call um, what that is. We'll call that out here in a minute and talk about that as well. Now let's talk about some things that I seen on the test as well as um, what they did have as well in the course itself. But one of the things that they're going to ask you about is to understand how an organization fits in and why you want an organization. Now, an organization is essentially a way to consolidate all your projects as well as resources into one billing and one sort of streamline view. And so we'll talk about how that comes into play here in the next slide. So basically you would create what's called an organization and so to do this you have to go through Google sales or through your Google partner uh, as well possibly to get this set up now again um, you're going to see you know more than a few questions on IAM and areas like that around security and, and projects and billing, et cetera. So that's, again, I'm just spending a little time to make sure that we get this. So there's two roles. You have what's called an organizational role as well as a project creator role. And so let's say you have your domain and let's say it is, I don't know, we'll make up a name called BillyBobsDonuts.com. 
and that would be your example dot domain that's your top tier to domain and under that account this would be how you'd manage your resources so you would create what's called an organization through google sales and all your projects are under that now why again would you want to do that this would help mitigate any accounts that were put in this domain's name and roll them under one umbrella so that you can manage them so again to avoid those shadow google accounts essentially is a good way to to consider why you want to do that so resources uh, again you know are generally organized in a hierarchy and an organization is considered the root node and again if we go back we could see um, over here that we have the organization under right over here and it's it's a hierarchy so under their projects and then resources so that's what they mean by that so with Google Cloud Platform basically you're creating essentially containers of basically resource usage users etc and the goal is to essentially manage them and so resource manager is going to allow you to to have that granularity that you're going to need especially like if you're in a a larger organization that's distributed around the country or around the world you know trying to manage uh, resources disparately isn't particularly easy so basically this is a good way to catch anyone that uses their email and builds your company basically to to capture everything under one umbrella and billing now under billing again um, this is an example so if I go over here the easiest way to show billing is to actually go over to the console now again you'll see a question on billing and so this shows you what I have available I'm still using my uh, free credits of course so again you go basically to billing over here now the one thing I wanted to make sure that you're aware of in billing is that you can export your bills now you have to set up a big query export or a file export now what you want to do again you have to set this up based on a project unless if you're set up with organizations and again you just can't log in and create an organization you have to get the good folks over in uh, Mountain View or wherever they're located to, to do that for you so I'm gonna go ahead and have the GCP professional boot camp ready and again you have to create a data set with BigQuery and so you could do it that way or I could go to file export and you could see yesterday I enabled billing export so again I could go and uh, you know again view that as well and if I want to uh, edit it I could edit the name and the bucket now the other thing too is this actually gets again this report is going to be dropped in a bucket so just be aware of that it's not like uh, you could have it you'd have to set up some scripts to email it to you and you could do this in CSV or JSON remember that for the test so a couple of things I want to point out uh, the one thing I did see on the test was how can you save your billing export BigQuery or you do a file export in JSON or CSV so do uh, remember that so again you could see that that's all you really need to know I could also create budgets and alerts so again if I've got a spend happy developer who likes to spin up app engine and compute instance engines and you know drop you know all kinds of big query information then you know again uh, you want to monitor that and keep within a budget now I go over here to transactions and you can see that it shows 
um, basically the resources that have been used, the credits, the debits that have occurred. Okay, so that's about all I want you to know around billing. So again, you could see billing over there. You could see that you you create an alert. And if and again, remember for the test, you want to do BigQuery or a file export to get a billing export. So do do recall that uh, for before you do take the test. So again, you get export to a, um, a BigQuery data set. You got to create a bucket or a BigQuery data set. Now again, on the test, you don't need to know how you set up BigQuery or anything like that. What you want to know is the options that you could go ahead and drop billing or collect billing information. The report is generated daily and you can't, you can't actually generate this daily. So I'm going to highlight that for you. So again, CSV or JSON, it's generated daily, BigQuery or a file which is CSV or JSON. So again, I'm repeating that for a reason. Um, and again, it's easy to forget this stuff. Okay, that's about all that I had. I'm going to do another module on data services uh, here. I wanted to uh, thank you for joining this particular session. Do you remember to click on the link for my Udemy.com Google Cloud Platform Bootcamp? This is a great way for you to um, prepare for this exam. Uh, if you had listened to the, my other modules, you'll know that only about 75 to 80 percent, even if you took the Cloud Architect class, is actually covered. Some areas like storage migration, uh, uh, you know, was not covered as well as DevOps. So I cover those areas in the boot camp. With that said, thanks for joining. I'll see you hopefully again in another session. Reach out if you have any questions.